Hello everybody and welcome to Celix's webinar on applications of Finaflux platform and biochip for the investigation of the role of different stimuli in development of atherosclerosis. My name is Dmitry Kashanin, I'm CTO of Celix and uh, I'm glad you could join us today. I'm going to start with introduction of atherosclerosis process and uh, leukocyte recruitment and the shear stress flow. And I will proceed to uh, our set of results, including a monocyte adhesion stimulation of monocytes with chemokines and uh, activation of endothelium with oxidized LDL. I will finish with a quick summary. An atherosclerosis leukocyte gets recruited from the bloodstream uh, by the way of interaction with endothelium. This process includes three major receptors CCR2. It's a uh, MCP1 uh, chemokine receptor, VLA4, which is, has uh, a ligand on the endothelial cells, VCAM1, and CX3, CR1, which is a fractokine receptor. This is a multi step process where monocytes first start to roll, and this includes the interaction with E selectin, uh, which is uh, expressed on the activated endothelium. This is followed by firm adhesion, uh, which is involves uh, uh, VCAM1 and fractokine ligands on the endothelial cells. This follows by cell spreading and transmigration into intima. In our results, we will present uh, two major activators uh, or stimulants of this process as MCP1 and fractokine. Following the transmigration, uh, mo uh, monocytes will uh, turn into microphages uh, by the influence of oxidized LDL binding to the scavenger receptors, which leads uh, to transformation of mo uh, macrophages into foam cells and formation of the um, necro necrotic lipid core. This uh, further forms the fatty streaks and uh, is recognized as the prog progression of atherosclerosis. A Venaflux platform is an in vitro tool which allows to study cell rolling adhesion and uh, migration under physiological flow. Very similar to intravital microscopy, uh, cells can be seen rolling and adhering to endothelium or also at the um, specific ligands caught in the microchannels of the Celexis biochips. This is a fun functional assay which allows to study specific receptor activation uh, and can be used for drug screening. In this set of results we used Vena8 biochips which has 8 microchannels of dimensions 400 microns by 100 micron deep and this can be pre-coated with the range of different ligands, VCAM1, selecting um, fractokine. Uh, on, on the right hand side you can see the image of THP1 uh, cell line adhesion to VCAM1 coated uh, VNA8 biochip. First, the biochips are pre-coated uh, by pipetting a 12 microliter of VCOM1 or selecting of fractokine into the uh, channels of the biochips. Subsequently, the biochips are stored overnight in humidified container to allow binding of um, ligands. Prior to experiments, biochips are blocked with 1% BSA to avoid non-specific adhesion. Additionally, we used VNIC biochips where we can culture endothelial cells over a period of 48 hours on a uh, um, plastic substrate and then assemble the chip to form two channels over the endothelial cells. In this way you can study interaction of uh, monocytes with a layer of treated uh, endothelium at the specified shear stress. To manipulate cells and uh, reagents within the microchannels, we recommend to use Myers Nano Pump. This is ultra precision pump, which allows to generate a ra different range of shear stresses, starting from very low to very high, in unpulsatile manner. It also allows 
parallel perfusions using multi-flow aid. It's fully co computer controlled and versatile. The experiments are performed in such a way that we take a cell suspension at uh, typically at 5 million cells per milliliter of uh, THP1 cells or monocytes of PBMCs. The sample is pipetted uh, into biochip which was recoded with ligand and then subjected to the flow. At the specified time images were taken by the microscope and the digital camera and uh, following um, that uh, we analyzed the images using Duca cell analysis software to assess the numbers of cells which are adhered. The software allows us to produce and uh, uh, create graphs um, essentially specifying number of cells adhered depending on condition of treatment uh, of cells and uh, on the channel coating. Now we go to results. First we start with monocyte adhesion and as explained the two major components of adhesion is a uh, Vicom 1 and Fractokine. First we assess the um, adhesion of, of monocyte and in, in this case is THP1 monocytic cell line adhesion to Vicom 1. First we did it on Vena 8 biochips which uh, Vicom 1 was coated um, onto the Vena 8 biochips and then cells which uh, subsequently treated with a different concentration of anti-VLA4 monoclonal antibody were passed through the channels. As, it, uh, as you can see on the high dosage of anti-VLA4 antibody you can see um, almost 100% inhibition of adhesion which proves that this adhesion is highly specific. If you look at endothelial cells which are activated with TNF-alpha and interferon gamma, this is not the case. Typically the treatment with a monoclonal antibody does not lead to great inhibition of adhesion. This is because there is a number of different adhesion molecules involved in the recruitment of uh, mo monocytes. In the case of fractokine, there is also potent uh, concentration of fr uh, fractokine uh, antibody, which can inhibit uh, adhesion by 50%. Further, we looked at the stimulation of monocytes with uh, chemokines. And in this case, we looked at uh, the effect of um, chemotactic um, protein 1. So we looked also at the effect of it in conjunction with um, uh, Vicom-1 coated biochips and also fractokine coated biochips. And as you can see from the left hand side graph that the treatment um, of uh, PBMCs with MCP1 tend to increase adhesion of these cells to Vicom-1 but doesn't do it the same in case of fractokine. This is actually proven in some of the um, animal models, in particular in mice models, where the um, effect of MCP1 and fractokine are found completely independent. The third uh, set of results um, is related to oxidized LDL stimulation of endothelial cells. First we have looked at the uh, effects of the uh, adhesion molecule expression on HUVACs which were treated with different doses of uh, oxidized LDL. We had three doses, uh, uh, low LOX, medium MOX and uh, high dose HOX. And we both treated non-stimulated HUVACs and TNF-alpha stimulated HUVACs. This graph re represents actually the ratio between the cells which are um, belong to LDL control versus the, uh, the uh, treated cells with um, uh, specific oxidized LDL. So it shows that in case of non-stimulated cells we had a greater increase of adhesion molecule expression than in case of TNF alpha stimulated uh, cells. This was proven then by subsequent experiments with uh, 
uh, VIC biochips and introducing the monocytes under flow conditions. So we had control where there's practically no cells attached and there were some cells attached with uh, treatment of oxidized LDL. Obviously when cells are activated with TNF-alpha uh, there was increase in in-cell adhesion and also a slight increase where where they were subsequently treated with oxidized LDL. This is the graph summarizing the results. In case of non-stimulated cells, the uh, treatment of uh, with uh, highly oxidized LDL was potent and then there's significant increase in adhesion number. In case of TNF uh, alpha stimulated cells, cells already activated to the greater extent where the treatment with uh, highly oxidized LDL is not uh, potent. In summary, uh, Venaflux platform uh, mimics in vivo shear stress flow microenvironment unlike any other in vitro assays and it allows to assess leukocyte adhesion, chemokine stimulation and endothelial activation under shear stress it's very robust and easy to use. You can code white chips with different proteins or grow endothelial cells on chip or have long term culture on chip. Uh, the results of experiments with Vina 8 biochips are reproducible and validated. It's also very flexible. Uh, micro uh, microliter volume isos can be performed with whole blood, wide range of cell suspension, and cell lines. You can uh, use a wide range of shear stresses from very low venous shear stresses to arterial shear stresses. Thank you very much for your attention.